Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this lecture, uh, lecture 24, we're going to talk a lot about graphing polynomial functions. And in the previous lecture, we talked a lot about this, some things that will affect the shape of the graph of a polynomial function, things like in behavior, x-intercepts, uh, turning points, just to name some of the things we talked about. Before we start graphing polynomials, there's one more topic related to the graph of a polynomial we want to introduce, and this is the idea of multiplicity. So when you have a factored polynomial, we need to factor the polynomial in order to find the x-intercepts of the graph. We see this from the factor theorem, which we've seen previously. But the number of times that a, a factor shows up affects the shape of the graph. And so this is what we mean by multiplicity. Suppose that the factor x minus c to the m is a factor of the polynomial. We learned by the factor theorem that if x minus c is a factor, that corresponds to c being a root of the polynomial. But in particular, we're looking at the exponent here. So x minus c shows up m minus time, but it does not show up in plus one many times. So m here is the number of times you see this factor in the factorization of the polynomial. This number m is called the multiplicity of the corresponding root. So a quick example of that, we look at the following polynomial, f of x equals 5 times x minus 2 times x plus 3 squared times x minus 1 half to the fourth. Uh, this polynomial is factored. We can very quickly see from it the roots of the polynomial. We say that x equals 2 is a root. Um, we get that from the factor x minus 2. We also get the root negative 3, which shows up here from the factor x plus 3. And we're also going to get the factor of 1 half, I should say the root. These are the roots of the polynomial. We're now going to describe the, the multiplicities of these roots. So when we look at x minus 2, notice, notice it shows up exactly once. So we say the multiplicity of the root 2 is the number 1. And I'm going to often denote this as a superscript to our root. Although, so we don't confuse this with an actual exponent, like we're not actually taking 2 to the first per se or 2 squared or anything. I'm going to use a different color. So we're going to write 2 to the two to the 1 here. So you see that the multiplicity of 2 is the number 1. When we look at the factor x plus 3, this corresponds to the root negative 3. And this factor shows up 2 times. So we say the multiplicity of negative 2 is negative 3, excuse me, is 2. And then finally, x minus 1 to the 1 half tells us that 1 half is a root of the polynomial. It shows up four times in the factorization. So the multiplicity of 1 half is equal to 4. And that's all that, that's all that comes down to for computing the root or the multiplicities of roots of the polynomial. Now, why does this matter? So what we see here is that the multiplicity of a polynomial's root affects the shape of the polynomial. And this is and the, the reason is the following, that if you have a polynomial f of x and you have that f of c is equal to 0, so it's a root, then we're going to see that as x approaches the number c, we're going to see that our polynomial f of x is going to be approximately the same thing as a times x minus c raised to its multiplicity m. So there might be some coefficient here. But when, when f of x gets close, when x gets close to c, the function f of x will behave very much like the monomial x minus c to the m, where some coefficient a comes into play here. And so if we think about that, this really has to do with the multiplicity there, whether it's an even number or an odd number. So for example, if m is an even number, what this means is our function will look like an even monomial when you're close to x equals c. So it looks something like this or something like this. In particular, if you were to draw the x-axis, because after all, x equals c is a root of this thing, what we're going to see is that x equals c, our polynomial is going to come, it's either going to touch it from above or it's going to touch it from below. In particular, the sign of the function does not change signs when you go from one side of c to the other side. You're either both positive or you're both negative. So the function won't cross the x-axis, it'll just touch the x-axis. And that's the terminology we're gonna use in this situation. That when your multiplicity is even, we say that the function will touch the x-axis either from above or from below. Now when your multiplicity is odd, 
uh, you're going to get something that looks like an odd monomial. Your function will either look like this, near x equals c, or it'll look like this when you're near x equals c. So in either case, your function will either do something like this, it'll go from a negative to a positive, it'll switch its sign, or the other option is that it'll switch its sign from plus to negative. And so when m is an odd number, the sign of f does change from one side of c to the other. And in other words, you're going to cross the x-axis. And so this is the thing you want to remember when you have a, when you look at the multiplicities of these factors here. When you have an even multiplicity, you're going to touch the x-axis, you don't cross it. When you have an odd multiplicity, you will cross the x-axis. This is all about switching the sign here. So let's look at a specific example. We can see one right here. f of x equals x squared times x minus 2. So if we record the roots of the polynomial real quick, we're going to get x equals 0 and 2 as the roots. And the multiplicities of said roots, because x shows up twice, x squared, we see the multiplicity of 0 is going to be 2. And x minus 2 shows up once, so we're going to get a multiplicity of uh, 1 right here. In particular, x equals 0 is going to have an even multiplicity, and x equals 2 is going to have an odd multiplicity. Odd multiplicity meaning that the function will cross at x equals 2, and at x equals 0, it's only going to touch the x-axis. And so if I were graphing this function, I might think of something like the following. That, okay, some important points to pay attention to. At x equals, uh, at, at x equals 0, we have an x-intercept, and at x equals 2, we have an x-intercept. At x equals 0, it's going to touch the x-axis but not cross. At x equals 2, it's going to cross, but not, uh, it'll cross the x-axis going from one side to the other. And we can then use information about like in behavior, uh, the y-intercept to determine what's going to happen. We'll see, we'll see that in a little bit more detail in the next example, actually. So what we can do in the following is say that what we can do right now is say the following. So when the function, when you are, when x approaches zero, our function is going to look like f of x. Uh, and it's going to be approximately equal to x squared. But then we have to determine the coefficient. The coefficient will be determined by plugging in zero for every, every factor except the factor that makes x go to, uh, that, that makes the whole thing go to zero. So x equals zero, what, let me say that again. x equals zero came about as a root because x squared is a factor. We're going to plug in x equals zero into every factor of x, of f of x, except for its corresponding one. So let me write this to the, to the side right here. So as x approaches 0, f of x will be approximately the same thing as x squared times 0 minus 2. And this tells us that it will be approximately the same thing as negative 2x squared. So this will look like an even monomial that's pointing downward. So our graph is going to look something like the following at x equals 0. It's a, it'll look like a parabola pointing down. Now, as x approaches 2, we see that f of x will be approximately the same thing as 2 squared times x minus 2. That is, it'll look like 4 times x minus 2. This will look like a linear function with a positive slope, so it'll be increasing. It'll go from negative to positive. And so we connect those, when we look at that, when you're near 0, it looks like a concave down parabola. When, you, when you're at 2, when you're close to 2, it'll look like an increasing line, a slope approximately 4. And that's what we see right here. Now, so we could actually plug in 0, plug in 2 into the function to determine these things. And that's how we got these little pictures right here. But we also could have used a test value, uh, like going to what we had before, erasing this for a second. I had mentioned earlier that it's going to touch right here and it's going to cross right here. What if I picked a number like, say, x equals 1 that sits between the, the two points there, 0 and 2? If I look at x equals 1, this is going to be 1 squared times 1 minus 2, which ends up being negative 1 in the end. So that means the point 1 common negative 1 is on the graph. Well, how can I connect this information together? If, if I go to the right, if I'm below the x-axis, crossing means I'm going to switch to the positive side, then it's going to have to cross like that, giving me the picture. And then if you're touching, that means going to the right, I'd have, or going to the left, I'd have to touch the graph right here. Now, this picture might be a little bit misleading because by no means am I assuming that 1, negative 1 is the local minimum, but it does help us fill in the information so we can determine how the graph behaves based upon 
the multiplicity. And so we get a picture like this right here. Now, if you couple this information multiplicity with the in behavior and the intercepts, which we already know the x-intercepts here, but if we combine it with the y-intercepts, we would actually have all the information we need to actually start putting together uh, the picture of our polynomial graphs.